Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. The talk yeah. in New York. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Tony G Yayo. You net. Had to bring it back, right? What up, yeah. out there, man. Had to bring it back. How you feeling, brother? I'm feeling good, man. Running around. I'm mm -hmm. on y'all show. I feel like you got a, a, a second win, Yayo. Like it's been a, a, a second win, third a, win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I see the way 50 work, and I'm like, mm -hmm. yo, when he always be like, yo, y'all lazy, y'all lazy. And I'm I'm just realizing, like, I thought I was working when I wasn't. Mm -hmm. So during the COVID, it was just like a tough time. Like, I'm sitting back, wasn't no tours. I'm like, yo, I got to figure out other things to do, bro. Mm -hmm. So I started doing the music, and then I started, you know, messing with Vlad. Vlad TV. Vlad TV. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I just started realizing when you put your presence out there to all these younger generation, the new kids that really don't know us, they know G-Unit. Mm -hmm. Or some people do remember, like, when mm -hmm. I go on tour, it'd be like, yo, my father used to play, or my mom used to play G-Unit. Mm -hmm. So it passed down to that generation. So I'm going on my own tours and, you know, I'm just making myself valuable, man, putting that work in. Did, 50, did, that, did that upset you when you heard 50 say y'all was lazy? Nah, not okay. even. That, that motivates me. Because mm -hmm. at a point, sometimes you do get lazy. I, I, our careers, we was kind of spoiled. Think about it. We had 50 where he was doing everything for us. Mm -hmm. So as for, like, when we was coming out, you had the Young Guns, for instance. I remember Hovane saying, Jay is not going to do... What 50 does for young guns. He was saying it in front of their face. Like, mm -hmm. I was right there. At, we, I think we was at MTV. Is it Hovane or Hov? No, not Hovane. Uh, my man that passed away from Interscope, Adam. Who am I missing? Hovane. 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 Excuse me. Okay. Hovane. Mm -hmm. and, rest and, in peace, Hovane, too, though. Yeah, Absolutely. rest in peace, Hovane, too. Because, you know, that was Banks guy, too, mm -hmm. you know, before he um, passed away. And um, let me get back on track. And I remember him saying, like, y'all got 50. Like, 50 was, you know, help us be in the videos. Right. Second beg for that. When he dropped, he, when he sold 11 million records, he dropped Beg for Mercy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was in jail. You know, him and Eminem was shouting me out. So mm -hmm. I always show my love to them. I know how 50 is. He, you know, y'all mm -hmm. the same sign. Y'all are crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good, you know, but it, it just motivated me to work because I see how he worked. We'll be on tour. He'll leave tour to go on movie set, go back, go to the gym twice a day. Mm -hmm. I'm tired, you know. I mean, the Free Ao movement was a movement right. within itself. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think we right. talk about about that enough. I don't know why randomly I was thinking the other day about when they shouted you out at the, I think it was the Grand. The Grand was like, Eminem. Yeah. That's yeah. why I always shout out Eminem, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because he didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. I was on Rikers Island, C-73 too how, low. Up. How was that when, when he shouted you out and you on the island? I'm that, sure it was. That was crazy because, you know, I was like, yo, that day, you know, it can get crazy on the island. I'm like, yo, I got to watch the Grammys today. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So I spoke to dudes in the house like, yo. Cause you know you get stabbed over TV, newspaper, all right. Mm -hmm. Shout to everybody, all right. Cause it get crazy. So it was an experience for me. Like he wore the shirt, and I was like, and Shady called me. I was like, yo, some got a surprise for you. Watch the Grammys. I mean, Tracy we knew. Shout to her. And um, it was a crazy. It was crazy for me. It was big. I felt like Tupac or, or Lil Wayne in jail at that point. Now this move right here. This this your hand in front of the face. Mm -hmm. Where did that move come from? Because, you know, of course, we've known you doing that for years. Where, where did that come from? That really came because I was on the run. Like, I was at that point when we was in the club, I was running. Like, 50 was like, yo, he said to me, you know, we had this judge, Judge Wong in Queens. Everybody know him. No joke. And he was like, yo, what are you going to do? You going to go to court or go on tour? And we blowing up now. Mixtapes are crazy. Bootleggers right. playing us everywhere. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I'm running. I'm so running. I ran. So, you know, I I could say it now because I got convicted for it, the mm -hmm. passport fraud. I went in the passport agency and was acting like my brother because mm -hmm. me and him look alike. And I went and got a passport and was traveling the world. I went to Brazil, all these places, and I was on the run. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it was it was crazy. But so how did they how did they finally catch you? Well, I mean, they caught. You they, put his hand down. As soon as you, you put his hand no, down. Look, no, as, as soon as you come back to New York, we did the Coca Cabana. We got caught up. We had some security guards with us. We called them gun in the box because mm -hmm. they always had the gun in the box. I never understood that. Mm -hmm. But they had their license and we got caught up going to the Coco Banner, Hip Hop Police. You know they was on there. Mm -hmm. Hip Hop Police was like on 50 crazy. Mm -hmm. Did you ever plan on turning yourself in? I don't know. I just... <laughs> <laughs> Nobody want to go to jail, man. Like, shout to everybody locked up. But everybody that's in jail don't want to be in jail. And I tell my young brothers all the time, like, yo, bro. Don't get in trouble. There's cameras mm -hmm. everywhere. All, all, all the police doing the feds do is watch y'all do crimes on camera, mm -hmm. and the feds come get you later. Oh, you the second rapper I heard say that. I remember Ghostface said he was on the run, but he wore the That's why he wore the mask. Yeah. When I heard you say that, I was like, oh, I heard Ghostface. Yeah, I was on the run. I had the passport. So when I was in the club video, I was just like, let me just cover my face because mm -hmm. this is getting kind of crazy. I'm on the run. I can't really be in videos like that. So, so how did John Cena just 
I guess jacket. Dude. John Cena. I know he gives you credit, right? Yeah, does. John Cena said his little brother, I believe, mm -hmm. did it, mm -hmm. and and his his little brother did him to do it, and I guess he did it in a match, and it just got crazy. Mm -hmm. When you seen Reese do it, what did you think? Oh, that was, she made it. She took it to a whole nother level. She brought it back. Had me trending for shout to, <laughs> shout to Angel Reese. She had me trending for, you know, the whole week. Mm -hmm. And then Caitlyn so, did it before her. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it was just like, I mean, with that situation was crazy because like you said, a black girl did it and it was a problem. Then when white girl white did it girl beforehand, did it, it was. Yeah, no, it was yeah. a problem. So I, I addressed that. You know what I mean? I talked about that too. That's crazy. I saw that on TMZ. Yeah. When we playing ball in the hood, you know it's competitive. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, when you do your car shows, mm -hmm. you in competition. That's right. I see you go at people, you know all what day. I mean? Yo, I got the best car shows in the world. None of y'all can mess with me. I don't know how you getting all these cars. Too. You said it, not me, but that. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> I told 50, he might as well just leave all his cars with you, bro. I t you know, Fifth calls me, and he'd be like, I, I want the, l let me get the car. And I'll give him back his car. You know, I, I usually have his Lambo or his, his, his Rolls Royce. And he'd drive it for one day, and then it sits. And then he loses the key, and then I got to go get it again. He but don't even drive him. He, he don't drive let me ball him. I'm playing around, bro. I meant to ask, too, right? I, I want to go back, right? I know you're a long time. Mm -hmm. Where do you think in your career happened where you didn't go to that next level, Right. And I asked Fifty that, and he said he thinks it was the picking of the wrong single. What, what do you What do you think it was? Interesting. I think it was just a lot of drama with Interscope when I came home. You know what I mean? You had Fifty. He was Curtis. I'm Curtis Interscope Jackson. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and Jimmy Iovine. You know, you had Game flipping, and like it was just confusing to me because I was on Game album, and then you know, the Game thing happened, and it was like, yo, he's on the same label as us. So why did he not just? Getting rid of them, you know, fifty so more records than the more whatever. It's like it was like a it was like a war in our own house. Cause you had records, yeah. you had the so seductive, yeah, so you had the wrong pimping. So seductive yes, I had so seductive. I know you don't love me. I had I know you don't love me and pimping, mm -hmm. right? But you gotta remember, I came in the midst of the Fifty Cent in the scope drama comedy. He was saying fuck Jimmy Iovine. Yeah, you know, yeah I'm yeah. my own boss. You know how to you know how Fifty mm -hmm. get. So I think sometimes, and at that point, we had so many enemies. It was like we wasn't getting a feature or nothing. Like you wasn't. Like we came to a point where we never used anybody. Like it was just me, Banks, and Fifty. Mm -hmm. You know, Fifty never looked to do features with nobody. Mm -hmm. So you know how it is. It felt like everybody was against us at that point because nobody really messed with Fifty in the industry like that or mess with us. Let's mm -hmm. be serious. Did it feel better now? Because I saw you out and about the other day, and like it was you and Pistol Pete and Uncle Murder. And yeah, it feel better. Like it feel it feel good to have no drama with uh Fat Joe because Fat mm -hmm. Joe, I was always always a fan of Fat Joe. Jealous mm -hmm. ones of envy. You know, he was a real one, Pistol Pete, he cool. So it's like, you get old and a lot of stuff was just, just hip hop. And I saw you say that was the, the realest beef G unit. Yeah, ever Fat had. Joe. Yeah, Fat Joe. I, yeah. I, I guess you call that a compliment, but that's a big compliment. Yeah. Right? Cause y'all had a I don't, lot I don't of look beef. at the Ja Root thing as like real. But y'all had street beef. Forget the rap. Y'all yeah. had beef with. Yeah, I, I look at I look New at York the I look at like the Preems, the yes, Worlds. World, yeah. I look at those kind of guys are like the real beefs. The mm -hmm. Jimmy Henchmen, yes. those were like the the real beefs where it got real with the street guys. Mm -hmm. But industry wise, it was the, you said Terror Squad was. The... Yeah, industry wise, Terror Squad. Okay. Definitely. Why? What makes that? What makes it? Cause yeah. I don't know, it's just a whole bunch of crazy Spanish dudes, man. Yeah. You know what, <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You oh. just know. You just know what it is, man. Like. The Bronx, it, it get mm -hmm. real. Them Spanish dudes in the Bronx. I told all my Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, Ecuadorians, Mexicans, it just get real, man. What was the craziest story that you was like, we might not make it out of here? Um, I think the Suge run-ins was always crazy for me. You know what I mean? Because you always heard of Suge Knight, but you never got to see him. So I think it was the, um, I wouldn't say we, we, we were scared, but I could say uh, it was the Vibe Awards. When we seen Suge Knight and Irv Gotti. And they walk past the trailer. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is. We in New York, but mm -hmm. we in LA. You know what I'm saying? We mm -hmm. New York dudes, we in LA. You know what I'm saying? So you see Suge Knight, you always heard about this guy, you know, TV, magazines, mm -hmm. but you know, never had, in the club was the first run in, but mm -hmm. this was the second. So he walks past the trailer with Irv and um, 50 just look at um James Cruz. James Cruz, you know, shout to him. He was a little, James Cruz is always in a situation. Mm -hmm. Industry guy, he got to run around with 50 bulletproof vests. You know how Chris Lighty was in the trenches. It was mm -hmm. crazy. So he just taps James Cruz and say, yo, go buy 20 knives. Go buy 20 knives? Yeah, just go to the hardware store. <laughs> I'm like, because what are we going to do? Just seem, you know, <laughs> it might get 20? crazy. How many, how many of y'all was it? It was about 20 to 15 or okay, something okay, like okay. that. So he's like, yo, um, go buy 20 knives, something like that. So James Cruz goes to the hardware store, buy 20 knives. He gives the bags, 50 handing them out. 
And then, you know, when we got there, we had beef with Fat Joe at that point. I remember. We had beef with, uh, we Dr. Dre's there, so, you know, that's obviously a beef with Suge Knight. Mm -hmm. Suge Knight got, like, some crazy-looking, Compton-looking dudes with him. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it just, you felt the energy to where we had our chairs like this. Like, we chin we had our chairs like this, like, watching everything. We wasn't like, you know how you So at the show, you're not even watching the show. Yeah, you're not watching even every... watching the show. We had our chairs right. like this. Like, yo, you felt the energy. Mm -hmm. Like, you felt something was going to go down. And that's when, you know, one of the dudes, Hit you Dre. Know, there wasn't no... We wasn't taking pictures back then, so I guess he asked Dre for the autograph. Yeah. Pops on Dre. Dre falls, but he automatically get up, start popping on him, and it just got crazy. Knives started coming from everywhere, and that's when, you know, one of the dudes got stabbed. So my question is, if there was 20 knives, how come only Young Buck did the stabbing? Young, nah, that, that dude got stabbed in the chest. Young Buck stabbed him with a fork. I don't know where that oh, came so he got from. <laughs> how did he stab with a fork? Where did he get that fork from? I don't know where you... <laughs> <laughs> he just came with the fork. So nobody gave Buck a knife? Nah, but no. Nah, I don't know what... I don't, that's why I was tripping. I know I had one everybody else did. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But Buck, matter of fact, him and Banks was backstage. They was about to perform, and mm -hmm. he just came with the fork. Mm -hmm. Jesus as soon as they started Christ. talking that time, when they started to, we went back to the mansion after that happened, because the kid got stabbed in the chest. He mm -hmm. collapsed and everything. The fork wasn't nothing. Mm -hmm. And um, we got back to the mansion and, and it was on the news. It was like, attempted murder, young buck. Young buck was like, I ain't do that, man. <laughs> I ain't do that. <laughs> so it all switched up when that time, that's why I be staying out of trouble. Bro. Young buck was like, I ain't do that, man. Because young buck hit him with the fork. He ain't stab him in the chest. Word, word, word. Yeah. He, I mean, he, he kind of ran with the story, though. Didn't buck run Not, with it? I mean, you know, come on, man. Yeah. You know, rappers, man. You don't yeah, run yeah. with the story. You know the thing that gets lost in that? The fact that Dre had hands. No, yeah. Dre was pound. Dre was, yeah. like, he was, he's a big dude. So he mm -hmm. was just boop, 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 tagging him up. Because dude violated. He had his wife there. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? He violated. In New York, jumped on him. We rap packed him. Boom. Do you sleep good? Meaning, I, I mean, I know you doing well in life, but do you feel like, okay, none of that old beef will ever come back to home? Nah, I always look over my back. I mean, right, I just right. feel like, I feel like, you know, once you're public property, because mm -hmm. 50, when we signed our deals, he said, you know, you're public property. And, you know, they can say what they want to say. You know, get out of here. Mm -hmm. You you washed, whatever. You're public property and you a target. I believe we all targets. Mm -hmm. Once people see, you know what I mean? You know how it is. You mm -hmm. just got to move militant right. out here because it's crazy out here. Like, I, I like the jury, but I don't I don't wear it all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, I ain't going to go to the to the middle of Compton or, or, or the middle or, or the BX with a whole bunch of jury on mm -hmm. and Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I move militant because we had somebody around us that, you know, fifth, Told us like, yo, when you know somebody kill you for that watch, right? You see it every day. Yeah, really? Yeah. People getting killed over nothing, man. Nothing out here. What? Whatever. What? what you no, know, for people that don't know, mm -hmm. there was a time when where, where y'all were all strained, right? G Unit right. wasn't talking to Fifty. Fifty wasn't talking to G Unit. What happened during that time, and then what got y'all back together? I'm always talking to Fifty. Fifty just, I'm used to Fifty's character because he's boo. He's a crazy cancer like Charlemagne, so mm -hmm. I'm used to him. He used to be on the block. You know, I remember one day 50 wheeling, he fell off his bike and told, yo, he was like, yo, nobody better laugh. Everybody started laughing. <laughs> nobody better laugh at me. I'm punching y'all in your face. <laughs> so I know him from being on the block. I know him better than anybody from Queens. Right, you, right, come right. on, man. You mm -hmm. from Queens. You know mm -hmm. what it is, bro. You was outside. Mm -hmm. So it's like legendary Queens. Like I know fifth better than anybody. We was on a block together. Banks is a little younger. So Banks was, you know, high school. He went to mm -hmm. August Martin. Buck is from... Cashville mm -hmm. and game is from LA. Cali, mm -hmm. LA. But once money and ego get involved, you know how dudes start acting. You know, boo boo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it used to be like, yo, I right, this is team Lloyd Banks team. This is Hunger for More team. Mm -hmm. This is the Thoughts of a Predicate team. Mm -hmm. This is Buck got the Cashville team. Everybody's their own boss in a way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it gets to their head. For me, it was different. I got out of jail and I'm like, y'all live in Battery Park. I could see the Statue of Liberty. Right, so I'm right. open. I'm like, Wow, Rikers Island to this? Thanks, Fifth. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of artists couldn't afford to give that kind of money to somebody to move them out the hood. Mm -hmm. That's why they got killed in the hood. Mm -hmm. So I always had that loyalty because I'm coming fresh out of jail like, yo, we we blew up. You also never seem to have a sense of entitlement. Nah, I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm good. I got a couple of houses. I made some good money. I traveled the world. I'm like on my four fifth passport. I'm humble. Mm -hmm. You know, I ain't got as much cars as Envy, but I got a few and had a few. <laughs> right, right. You What's... know, but but for me, I'm like, yo, we all made money. I done seen Fifth, like, for instance, I don't want to say too many names, but, mm -hmm. you know, like, I'm going to say it, Buck. Like, Buck will go on tour, 
You know what I'm saying? We wasn't familiar with money, how to save money. We black dudes from from the hood. Mm -hmm. You know, like you go on tour, you spend mm -hmm. 250, right? And then later on, you have that grace period because you're in another tax bracket, mm -hmm. right? So you'll be, you ought to pay that what maybe a year and a half, maybe two years later, that money not, might not be there. Yo, fifth, can I borrow 250? I got a tax problem. But how many times you think a person gonna do that for you, bro? That's real. No, no, I seen Fifth save a lot of people, and not you know just saying? artists. I, seen I could just imagine what people DJs. ask y'all for. Let me I borrow a quarter million. No, I, seen, <laughs> I seen Fifth save DJs, regular people, yeah. artists, like movie people, actors, and it's funny people. You know, see him as a mean guy, but I'm like, if y'all really knew the how much he's helped people, you would be surprised. Yeah. And the people that you think got it, that you feel got it, they don't really got it. All them actors on power, rappers, us, me, mm -hmm. Banks, Buck, Game, Game put Game in a lovely, Game had the best situation. Cause he had Dre right there on deck. We, yo, we need a West Coast dude now. Mm -hmm. What you think when we in the studio, we got a New York, oh, Dr. Dre blowing up a New York dude. What you think um, them dudes in the studio saying? Mm -hmm. West Coast, the best coast, cuz. Mm -hmm. we, mm -hmm. we, we, need, we need a West Coast dude. So Game was in a perfect situation. Cause Dre had to do that. You had to blow up a West Coast dude now. I always wonder how people around y'all felt about that, like especially people from New York, like because Buck was from the South, Game was from the West, y'all was red hot. They, they didn't feel like y'all should have been leaning into more New York artists at the time. Well, Buck came because I went to jail, yeah, and he had, you know, he had a situation where he was around Fifth, you know, because of Juvie and a couple mm -hmm. other things. You know what I'm saying? He was really, really around like that. Like mm -hmm. Fifth rocked with him. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Where they even did the record, Bloodhound. Buck is a talented artist. I love mm -hmm. Buck, mm -hmm. but at that point, he came. The only reason why Buck came along because I went to jail. Mm -hmm. Fifth snatched him up. Yo, come on, Buck, come with us. Because you lied a liking to him. But the people around y'all, how did they feel about that? Seeing y'all put energy into those other guys. This is at, at that point, nobody wanted to be a rapper. Everybody wanted to be a gangster. Right. Now everybody mm -hmm. wanted to be a rapper. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people in, that was in our entourage are like rappers now. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I ain't no rapper. Remember that? I ain't no rapper. Yeah. You wanted to be the street dude in the background with the name. Mm -hmm. But now the game changed. Everybody rap now. It's like, all right, cool. And what's the, one, the one thing I think 50 dropping the ball with you, yeah, was why you ain't in none of these TV shows, man. Like, you, know you, what? you just got that natural personality. I'm, I can you know see what? You he might see, not want to do see, it. Do you see, want to do it? No, I want to do it. But I looked at it like this. If he put all his friends in, in power, it wouldn't be. I ain't say all of them. I say you. <laughs> yeah, all right, cool. Good. Like, yeah, see, watch this. Fit, put me in something. You know? <laughs> Charlemagne said it. Have you ever asked? No, I, never, I don't be pressing 50. He done enough right. for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I. I mean, I'm going to fifth, y'all. I need a half a million, bro. I got you. Quarter million, bro. Got you. Come on, bro. I can't keep he, pressing he, them he for everything. You a half a million? Just yeah. Like, Yo, fifth, I need a half a million, bro. Fuck. I've seen them do it for Buck, too. Yo, Buck, I need I need a quarter. Mm -hmm. Yo, here, yeah, man, I got it. Got you, bro. What's your relationship with Banks? Banks is my brother. I talked to him the other day. Are they ever going to mend that? I stay, I stay out you of stay, it. <laughs> you stay out of it. Cause fifth is, you know, fifth is fifth. Fifth mm -hmm. is crazy. I just know how to deal with him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. From South Jamaica, he been like that. Like, you gotta think on a block, 12 years old, never knew who his father was. Mom's got killed. He's selling drugs with all the, with dudes twice his age. These dudes like 18, 19, you know what I'm saying? So he, he came up different. I had a mother and father, you know, I was mm -hmm. supposed to be a good kid, actually. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the streets, my neighborhood, every there was no role models. Everybody sold drugs. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? That's how you got the name Yayo. Yeah. All right, all right. Being on the block. My father used to chase me off the block. Mm -hmm. Haitian parents. You know, they don't play. Island parents don't mm -hmm. play. Oh, chase me off the block. I always wonder, does 50 get so mad at them because he's got such a big heart and he's, you know, he's cancers are overly loyal. So when they feel like they've been slighted in any way, it's the rap. Yo, listen, man. People think Fifth is a bad guy, like you said. Mm -hmm. Omari, Ghost. Mm -hmm. Remember he said, oh, yeah, Yo, I, 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 don't, I didn't get paid yeah. enough. 50 made you a star, brother. Mm -hmm. Everybody on that show from Roe Timmy to Michael Rainey, Gianni, they all stars now. Little Meech mm -hmm. took him, put him in acting school, mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. at 18, you know? And there's a lot of beside, behind the scenes stuff that people don't know about. 50 help people with lawyers and situations. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, some people that are not even really G-Unit affiliated, help them with lawyers, help them get their they money right. Mm -hmm. Like he helps a lot of people, bro. Sean Money, mm -hmm. like Sean Money had 18 cars, two houses. Like, I'm quite sure he was getting like probably over half a million a year mm -hmm. working at G Unit. And you know, we were smoking blunts in the office, brother. Mm -hmm. We was working, but we could have worked more. And I now sometimes I understand what he's saying. And I'm not saying he not crazy. Sometimes he, you know, 50, he get crazy. He go crazy. But 
at the end of the day, he helped everybody from game to buck to me, Banks, everybody. Like, Did you really want to rap? Are you, uh, that was just, you saw you saw it working for fifth. You like, you know, I'm gonna try it. Yeah, no, I mean, I was on the block, and you know, I used to be in the parties with my man Fat Shot, DJ Rough Hands, mm -hmm. and we used to go, you know, Freaky Ty was from my hood, so we used to always get on the mic and play around and freestyle in my man basement, and you know, I just started rapping. But you know, I never thought Fifty was gonna sell 11 million records. Mm -hmm. We'd be in the house listening to Get Rich or Die Trying. Dudes is like, yeah, I was like, yeah, cool. But I always seen a vision. I'm like, nah, this is fire. Fifty's the next one. You know, I'm 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 a music guy. Like I used to go to the Ave and buy Envy tapes, Clue tapes, Dog Time, Grandmaster Vic, all of because Queens is music. So people really used to buy Envy's tapes. Yes. Okay. No, they don't even say he's playing. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't even do that. Don't even do that. Don't even do that with him. Don't even do that with him. Nah, envy a legend. Envy a legend. I hear him say that. Was out. <laughs> no, people, Hot he Wax. Know. He know we, he we used know. to go to Hot Wax, get the uh, tapes. He, he don't know. You know? Because you got to remember, Clue and Envy went from, it went from blends, because we used to, every, it used to be all about blends, Grandmaster Vic, Dog Time, Dirty Harry, and then they just went, it went to playing the exclusives. Mm -hmm. And that was you and Clue. Mm -hmm. That's how they changed the game. Him and Clue. Played exclusive records, like a Nas freestyle or this freestyle yep. or that. You ever got mad at them for leaking any of y'all records? Nah, because the bootleggers made us right. at that point. The DJs made us because we was getting played everywhere. we go to the bootleggers, you know. Sometimes dudes would want to beat up the bootleggers and 50 be like, nah, why are you doing that? They're spreading the word. We had mixtapes everywhere you go. Mixtapes everywhere. But nobody, <laughs> you know the conversation nobody has? Mm -hmm. You know, you, we know what Dirty Harry and all of them did, and we know what y'all did, but mm -hmm. the artists, like what G Unit did, and they were one of the first. Dipset did, and the Locks they took the mixtape game to another level. By the way, y'all started doing mixtapes. Right, but we we wasn't stopping. Mm -hmm. We just we had a mixtape every week. Yeah, they like, were one I of the remember, first. I remember when Ja Rule dissed us, and we was in Eminem studio, mm -hmm. and we did semi-automatic gunfire, and that like that like killed Ja. That that tape whole tape killing Ja Rule. Shout to Ja Rule, killed him, still killing him. And um, he said shout to Ja Rule, <laughs> still killing him. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And, Have you ever ran into Ja? Nah. Never. Nah. Only only when, you know, the situation in the studio. Mm -hmm. That was back, way back. And I had like a cut on my hand. That was like years ago. Mm -hmm. But to so me. He wasn't with 50 on the flight when they was on the To me, you got to understand. When, when you think of Queens, like, I was in the streets for real. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to keep it real. Like, I don't know what Ja was doing. I'm mm -hmm. not from his neighborhood. My baby mom's is from his neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Pop over there in um, Woodhall. Mm -hmm. Right? But as for like seeing Nas come to the block with Black Just, um, E money bags coming through. Like my block was legendary. One three four on Gabrua. Mm -hmm. It was legendary where everybody was outside. I never really, I was outside, so I never. I, they said Irv Gotti was a DJ, mm -hmm. but I never been to a party where he DJ. Mm -hmm. I know the Rockaway Twins. I know Goldfingers. I know Tape Master that brings the system everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, Grandmaster Vic, Baby J, go Baby Master J. J. Yeah, yeah. Come on, like I never seen Irv like do a party, and I didn't been to parties on the North Side. Southside, everywhere. I, I never really seen them outside. Mm -hmm. Like, Ja Rule wasn't known as a figure in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. in any neighborhood. No disrespect, but. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to ask, you know, they've been trying to beat me up here the last two, three weeks, right? Mm -hmm. If 50 and Wayne did a verse. You can't ask, how you gonna ask Tony Ayo that? Like, he gonna have an objective opinion on I that? Think, I think it's gonna be good, but I mean, you know, Wayne got a catalog too. And Fifth got a catalog. I, I see. I, now I will say this: it's a right? lot of records that they both have. So it, I mean, it'll it'll be a dogfight. It'll be good. But you but, know what Yale said that y'all don't say? He said catalog. What I find disrespectful is they say get rich or just take out Wayne's whole catalog. Nah, we gotta go I back. I didn't say that. I didn't, you, you that is what you say. No, that, He's I, like, I, I can that. play eight songs off just get I, rich. I can play eight songs off get rich or die trying because because Wayne does have a lot of songs. Wayne Wayne is. Nice, he's dead nice, he's a legend, he's a GOAT. I'm gonna start telling people what you say behind the scenes if you don't stop this stupid shit. But <laughs> I always say, <laughs> nah, you can say, Wayne, I say Wayne is a bigger artist when it comes to a rapper. Wayne has been doing this since, though. what, 12, 13 that years old? I don't old. know about. But mm -hmm. when it comes to cultural <laughs> influence, you can't fuck with 50 in those I don't records. Know Wayne's a bigger than artist I don't than think, 50. I don't think nothing was bigger than G-Unit, 50 Cent, Eminem, and Dr. Dre. But you gotta understand the element of everything was crazy. It was crazy, like we had video games that was selling. We yeah. had clothes that were selling. Yeah, right. Do we have cereal, Adam? Do we have cereal? I think we had cereal that was selling. We had everything, socks. Like everything was selling. And Eminem was what at sold 60 million? Mm -hmm. 50 sold 11 million? 
It was crazy. Like, I don't think... The only thing is Wayne has the Nicki Minaj. He has the Drakes. He has the Young Money. He has a huge yeah, kid definitely. with that, right? With Drake and... With that, Drake, I mean, with Drake and Nicki, of course. But when it comes to those cultural hits, I don't think there's nothing bigger than them, them records that, that, that you play for 50. And like I said, you could pick any Wayne record and I will destroy that one record. With, it's with not the record. true. Pick I'll one go. record. We had the street, yo. We had the street. You got, you got No, I'm talking about. I'm talking about the mixtape where every nothing was playing but June. No, I'm, I understand. But. Like, like, like you're acting like Wayne didn't have the street no, when I'm it comes to mixtapes. But I'm just saying is that when it comes to that cultural influence of how a record feels, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think about violence, yeah, We had kids wearing bulletproof vests in the suburbs, man. Wayne What's had this kids about? wearing. That's the, true. The rock star jeans and nah, the, that's right, that's right. The, the dress. Wayne Sketches. is a legend. Wayne, yeah, like he started the dress. He started like the dress right yeah. now. He started the dress. But you got to remember this: we was on Little Wayne tour that, back in the days. We started. He started way ahead of us. Mm -hmm. And that's what I said. Wayne started had a so beef young. Too. He started. Remember, when, remember he started, Wayne had a beef? People forget about that. I forgot about when Wayne that. Wayne said, "I piss in your vitamin water" or something like that. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. But they cool now though. Yeah, they good. <laughs> What about that stabbing? When you you talk, you mentioned it briefly though. What, oh, what, and, and and Sony. Yeah, was it a real stabbing? Um, when it was a real. It, it was a there? real stabbing. I'm gonna tell you what oh. happened, man. We was in the studio, and that was that's Sony, right? Where Sony was, Studios, yeah. Sony, remember they had the one across the street, mm -hmm. and they had the big building. The big building is where everybody would say Michael Jackson would take all the rooms. Right, right. So we um walking in, and at that time, um, I think we seen Wyclef, and you know, I think I think Scooter was there. Mm -hmm. I think was Haitian Jack there? Haitian Jack. We see them in the lobby. Mm -hmm. It's just me and Fifty. But Fifty, a lot of sock posse, yeah, lobby. you know back then. Sock posse, yeah, they was all in the lobby mm -hmm. with with Clef. We seen Clef, mm -hmm. and um, I think Proswell was there too, mm -hmm. or whatever. So, you know, we go upstairs, but we not worried about it. Fifth. I swear to God, Fifth got. I don't got nothing on me. Fifth got a four fifth, no safety on them. We mm -hmm. chilling. We go upstairs. We got a session. So Clark Kent, his nephew, end up being a DJ. Giz, but mm -hmm. Giz was not really mm -hmm. a street dude. He was just a cool dude. Mm -hmm. You know, shout to Clark Kent. He was just like, yo, here 50, I got a DJ for you, right? Mm -hmm. So we go in the studio, we supposed to record. Now the studio is small, it's a small room and it's a small hallway. So in the next room is um, Tone and Poke, they working on beats and me, 50 and Giz is in the room with the engineer. Forgot what 50 was working on. So. I guess I'm gonna keep it real. I don't know. And this I, is before Indisco. This is when look, 50 was signed to Sony. Mm -hmm. I think in my mind, I think Prizewell said something. Like, I don't know why. Like, he must, you know why what I'm saying? Why do you think Prize we, oh, we, we, he, I think he said something. I'm gonna keep it real. I don't think why it was Prize. Why Prize? Trust All the me. people you just named. Trust me. That was the information that was, you know what I mean? That Prizewell said something to Ja Rule and him. Mm -hmm. So we in the room, you just hear a boop, 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 commotion. These dudes come in like it's a movie, like, yo, what's up now? But they ain't, got, it, it's no guns or nothing. It's nothing to really, all you see is crutches and like, like stuff picked up from the studio. And I guess one of them had like a kitchen knife. So it was, uh, was Irv there? No, it was Irv Brother. It was, I think it was Black Child at that point. Ja, I think somebody else. But, so we starting to get it on. Nobody turned off the light while we getting it on, the light, like turn off, cause you know how bump into the, bump into somebody bumping to the switch. So we fighting, everything is dark. You don't know what's going on. You just hear melee. So all you heard was, get the gun. You know, Fifth bluffed him, cause the gun was in the other room. That's why I say Ja Rule, and him, he wouldn't even be here. He would have been gone. Mm -hmm. Like it, our careers would have been totally different if that gun was in that room. And I swear on my dead father, like I'm telling you the truth. The gun was in the other room. I've seen it. You know what I'm saying with my own two eyes. Mm -hmm. They come in, we get it on, boom, 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 get the gun. They run out. Fifth will speak at one of them niggas. I don't know if it was her brother or whoever. I see him throw a speak and say, get the gun. Once they heard get the gun, everybody started running out. But the gun was in the other room. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Fifty had a scratch on his back, right? And I got stabbed in my hands and my finger was like cut right here. So look, it looked crazy because mm -hmm. it was hanging a little bit. But look, this is all I got. That and that. That was it. Mm -hmm. The way that when every when they started trying to say that you know you had an order of protection and all. Come on, that, bro. That? Come on, bro. People are always gonna make up stuff. Yo, they snitches, they rats. When you number one and you on top, people gonna make up stuff. Where's the paperwork? Where's the paperwork? And now people go to the point where they go on YouTube and make fake paperwork That's about right. you. Yeah. And the paperwork <laughs> they had was fake. Mm -hmm. That was proven twenty times. You know, 
Then we ended up getting the chain later on. It was always just a long thing with Ja Rule. I, I ain't really know the guy. Yeah, yeah when people talk about y'all ever, you know, squashing that beef, I'm like, I think too much violence happened. That never yeah. squashed. Ever be. I don't think beef never gets squashed. I think it just get old. Mm. Mm. Nah, y'all squashed the beef with Fat Joe. I mean, Fat Joe's different. Y'all squashed that beef. Fat, fat, fat Joe, that was more of a Chris Lighty thing. I squashed you know the beef saying? with Jada kissing like him in Styles. When them. you look at the henchman thing, people look at, oh, he slapped the kid. No, henchman didn't like Chris Lighty. That's what it came down to. Chris Lighty was more successful than Jimmy Henchman, and Jimmy Henchman wanted to move on the same block as him, and he wanted all the artists, and he wanted problems. Why? Because he didn't like Chris Lighty. That's where that came from. I never start. Like, I'm never, I don't know Ja Rule. That's not justification to slap the kid, though. You no, know? I didn't. But I didn't slap the kid, see? Oh, that, that, that was yeah, the rumor. I didn't, the room. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't the slap the kid. Somebody else did. And that person got shot at the day before. We got, my car got shot oh, up shit. the day before. So people look at things in one way. You know what I'm saying? Now, now when you look at the Jimmy Henchman, and I don't like to talk bad about nobody in jail, but, like, I don't care. But, you know, and it, when you look at that situation, Chris Lighty lived on, was on 25th. Jimmy Henchman came to 25th. Chris Lighty had um, 50. I got to get game. Where you think all the drama came from? Mm. Henchman. Because 50 would come in the room like, these guys be super street OGs, but 50 would come in the room and be like, I don't care who he is. And they didn't like that. Because sometimes, you know, a lot of artists friendly extortion. Mm -hmm. Like when you look at Ja Rule and Preen, come on, bro. Dudes was in their pockets, bro. You had movies, movies, what was that movie? Black Gangster? Mm -hmm. It never came out, right? Then Preem and somebody get like a half a million? Well, then, then mm -hmm. They got some money. Mm -hmm. The movie never came out. Black Gangster. It's like, it was, oh, we seen Friendly Extortion early, bro. Come on, we was around you. Come on. Mm -hmm. Y'all been in this game for a long time. Now you can't do it. Dude's going to call the cops. Mm -hmm. Call the cops, get them away from me. That's it. Or dudes can't do it. It's not going to work. I never but, understood. I, I don't want to say allowed, but how was... Jimmy Henchman managing game and game was signed to G Unit. That just seemed like a, a negative negative. That's what I'm saying. Cause and, and that's where all the whole drama comes from. Chris Lighty and Jimmy Henchman. Yo, I got fifty. All right, yo, game. Mm -hmm. He got in game here. Yo, you don't need him. You're bigger than him. G Unit's here. You're here. He started that's where all the poison crazy. started coming from. Mm -hmm. It was a competition. And then I looked at game like, yo, this dude set up pop. You from the West Coast. You got Tupac tatted on you. Why you even care to even be with him? But at that point, game was young, and I understand. And you know, henchman had a name, but that was the poison that messed up a lot of money. I rather game would have been signed with Chris Lighty mm -hmm. than than and he's and game so way more records than me. I was on his first album. Mm -hmm. I like I have no bad blood in my body towards nobody in G Unit. We made history together. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying to you is, I wish he would have signed with Chris Lighty or somebody else than henchman. Because that was the poison. Henchman never liked Chris Lighty, bro. Never, never. And rest in peace to Chris Lighty because that was somebody that I looked up to mm -hmm. and always looked up to me. And I know what he did as for the company, too. What he did with 50 and how he blew, how he had Foxy. And we used to be there. You see uh, State Property Missy and, and all, yeah. Missy, K. Slay. We mm -hmm. go to his office. So that's that's what I knew. You know, James Cruz in there, mm -hmm. um, Claudine, um, Moon, Moon Mo. Scott. M Mona Scott. Yeah, this is what I knew. I was learning from me watching these people. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. This violated thing is crazy. Whatever, you ever what? think about how blessed y'all are? Because think about all the violence y'all escaped. Because well, I ain't never even heard about the shooting that happened before the young man got, got slapped, right? No, nah, but it's cool. after that, then your mother house get Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Up? But I always looked at it like this, bro. If I slap your kid or your kid, what are you going to... You're going to... You, you got the Absolutely, right. It's yeah. all gloves off. And right. it's all good. But then y'all G-Unit officers got shot up before. Yes. Y'all missed a lot of bullets is what I'm saying. Yeah. That's a blessing. Tour yeah, bus, definitely. mama crib. Like, it was a definitely. lot of bullets. You know what's crazy? And I always thank God. Like, I always say my prayers before I leave the house. Because I remember one day I had a plaque. And people won't even believe this story. And a bullet fell out of it. And my father found it. He was staying with me at the time. And the next day, my mom's crib got shot up. Or it could have been the same day. Like, but my mom's crib got shot up. So, I mean, you know, God is good, bro. A bullet was like your plaque? A bullet. Like, I had a 50 cent plaque. Wait, wait, wait. And it got bullets in it. And it's above my door. And my father found it. He's like, yo, somebody shot the house up? And I'm like, nah, that fell off the plaque. And the next day, Damn. like, my mom's crib got shot up. So, you get signs. You know to be low and you got to move right. Because one thing about us is we knew how to move. Like, all right, cool. If it's hot, cool, I'm good. Like, when my mom's crib got shot up, I went out there and was looking to do stuff and 50 call me like, yo, bro, you outside, you got something on you, you bugging out, bro. Use your brain, bro. 
It's chess, not checkers. And every time we have money on our head, I always respect Fifth because he'll laugh about it. Yeah, they got 20 on your head. They got 80 on my head. I don't even worry about it, man. It ain't that because we know how to move. We got the bulletproofs. We moving low. We moving militant. That, is there anything you ever let go? Like when that's happened to your mom's house, you say, you know, I'm going to let that go because of what happened. I know I know what caused that, so I'm going to let yeah, it go. Yeah, definitely. It humbles you. Mm -hmm. It's real out here, like playing with this internet and playing, you know, whatever, you, in music and whatever, it gets real. It's realer now than it was back then. Mm -hmm. Like you see how these kids are getting knocked off every day. That's why I say, you know, it, it must have been like seven, eight years ago to see you and 50 enjoying which I didn't have before. Right. You know what I mean? Because they couldn't go to the clubs and experience the records like y'all should have. Y'all couldn't go to these events and go yeah. to these things. And it wasn't because of the rappers. It was mainly because of the hip-hop police because there was times where they'd be like, no G-Unit, no Dipset in the clubs. Mm -hmm. All the clubs in Manhattan. So hip-hop police, you remember Curly Top? Mm -hmm. He's retired now. Hip-hop police, they all retired. There's all new ones now. Mm -hmm. For for the dudes that'll follow TJ and all these dudes mm -hmm. in the city and all the young dudes now. But all them dudes are retired. Mm -hmm. But them dudes used to tell us, yo, you can't come to this club. You know how much money we missed out on? It's good. To, it's, it's definitely good to see that. Man, yeah, yo. And congrats on the Welcome to the Culture podcast, Thank you, man. man. Welcome yeah, to what, the Culture I, I podcast. Ask, what, what, um, I seen you in, in, you screaming on Math Hoffa. What, what happened with, with that? No, nah, Hoffa and them is good. I just feel like sometimes, like, when you go online, it just be like, it, it just was, felt like clickbait. Like, you asking me, um, can I pick up the phone if for Banks and 50s around? They both my friends. I'm a grown-ass, you know, man. Like, mm -hmm. What are you talking about? And then you ask me about like six nine, and I I don't want to, you know I know dudes that got locked up over that, so I'm just like nah, I, ain't, I don't want to. Just felt like clickbait, mm -hmm. and you know we was drinking and you know how I get. <laughs> and why you got bit by a dog, man? Why you got the? Um, you know I I love dogs. I got pit bulls, and my yeah. man, I'm about to get one of them dogs, and um, I just was like, yo, let me try it. He was like, yo, it's not that bad. <laughs> try but, what? <laughs> I was like to put. I put the suit on. Yeah. Oh man. So I wanted to see how it. Cause I know you gotta. You wanna do it again? You wanna come by my crib? <laughs> nah, I'm good with your dog. I never do it again, bro. I thought it. What I ain't think it was. You got a punk ass dog. Nah, man. His dog is crazy. I seen his dog online, man. I had a German just like that, mm -hmm. Ethy, but she passed away. Now I got a pit. I gotta train that dog. But why? Why you had to get bit? <laughs> the I don't feeling? know. I just wanted to try. I didn't think it was gonna be that bad. They like put the suit on. It ain't gonna be bad. My man said he do it all the time. All right. You know. So I was just like, all right, cool. I put it on and. I ain't gonna lie. I wanted to try it one time too. But then when when the lady took off the the dude took off the suit, I see his arm. I'm like, nah, I'm good. No, I thought I ain't think it was gonna be like that. Trust me, Charlemagne. I ain't think. Yeah. Did you want to do music? Yeah, I just dropped the mixtape, loyal. I, just I, I, dropped I know, that. but do you want to do it? Like, because I feel like your personality is is so big. Like, you probably can make just money doing that now. And yeah, you, I mean, I, I, I do music. like talking to people. I do, mm -hmm. I do like, I do like what, like what, what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and what Envy do and the Breakfast Club do. So, I mean, I think now the game is changing. Like, these podcasts be fun. Like, you see right. podcasts, radio shows, like. It's going to YouTube now. People want to, you know, know they want to know my personality. Mm -hmm. They want to know your personality. Mm -hmm. You, I, I'm like a, a sponge. I just mm -hmm. like to, I watch y'all guys all the time and just soak up game. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. how you got the books or Envy got the car shows. Mm -hmm. It's all a hustle for me. All right, all right. You know what I mean? Like I see y'all hustling. Mm -hmm. You got about three shows, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We working. Three, four shows. This mm -hmm. guy got mm -hmm. about three, four shows going on. Mm -hmm. Car show, got the reality show, got the... The house show, right? The That's real right. estate. Mm -hmm. yep. So it's just, I don't know. It's just like a hustle for me. I just want to hustle. Right. Music, mm -hmm. podcast, like Welcome to the Coach. I'm going to go crazy with the production this year. Um, I got the Passport to the Future. I'm trying to do things for the kids this year. Um, I got the clothes, of course, on PassportBoys.com. What else I got going on? Sony Theater on the 26th. Mm -hmm. um, and more tours coming, man. Shout to 50. Shout to Banks. Yeah, I heard you're you going know? back on the road. Yeah, back on the road. Oh, so, so you 50 and Banks going back? Nah, not Banks. Oh, shout, <laughs> shout to Uncle Murder. Uncle Murder. Shout yeah. to Murder. Yeah, shout to shout Uncle to Murder. Murder. Nah, no disrespect to Banks, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I, yeah. that, you know, 50's crazy. It's, that, you know, that's something that Banks got to, you know, work out. Me, I just know 50 for a long time off the block before Banks, so I kind of know, you know, he might say something crazy, and it's just like, oh, man. Right. You, you, I heard him say some crazy stuff in life, bro. Now, we used to hear them stories where 50 would swing on Woo Kid and... Swing on Woo Kid. Woo <laughs> Kid, play the wrong record, think, punch Woo Kid in the chest. I think one time was the craziest, though, was um we backstage. This is the craziest one, though. Mm -hmm. And I hope nobody get mad about this. Um, And 50 said to James Cruz, because he always messed with James Cruz. Always, Cruise. to this day. <laughs> to this day, I don't know why, but he said to James Cruz, 
we Mayweather, it's the Mayweather. I don't know where we at. Mayweather, mad people's back there. Mm-hmm. He goes, yo, man, that man F Diddy. Like, I'm like, yo, <laughs> in front of a whole room of people. I'm like, yo. Did he, did he touch your butt? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, your butt. I was like, no disrespect to them, but I was like, yo, this dude is crazy. They're crazy. So it's I crazy. know why everybody hate me. I understand, man, but that's my guy, bro. It's cool, crazy. Man. What did everybody so, say when he said Yo, that? the whole room just stopped. Like, <laughs> they were stupid, like, man. And, you know, we, Damn, man. It's just stupid. a champ. You know what I'm saying? You I'm just like, saw yo. James Crew. He was out there. Yeah, no, nah, he's a cool dude. That's my guy. <laughs> like, stupid, bro. But fifth, you never know what he going to say, man. So while we on the road, I stay away from him. I give him a space, oh, man. I get, man. I get with you later when it's showtime, bro. Fifth is crazy, man. Jesus. All right. Well, we appreciate you for joining us. Thanks, Check man. out the podcast, The Culture. Welcome Club. to The Culture Podcast. Yes, it's Tony Yayo. Yeah, made it, Mom, on The Breakfast Club. Yeah. You've been, you've been up here before. Yeah, but I'm by myself now. I'm All 50. right. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.